Welcome. It's great to see you and welcome everybody to the first episode of the Because She Can series. I'm so excited to be interviewing my friend and fellow pageant sister, Jane Kennedy today. Uh, Jane, I want to kick it over to you to quickly introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about where you come from and, and what you're currently up to. Sure. Well, I am beyond honored to be here and extra excited to be on the first episode. I just can't wait to see where this goes. I admire you so much and think that this is such a great idea. So excited to be here. Uh, yes, I was born in Australia, moved to California with my family when I was six, spent most of my childhood in California, went to college at UC Santa Barbara. And then, um, yeah, when I, while I was in college, I ended up interning in Washington, D.C., fell in love with D.C., and eventually made my way back there. I spent the past two years working in criminal justice reform. Before that, I was working in tech in San Francisco. And uh, after two amazing years in D.C., working on issues that are really important to me um, in a, a really exciting just had some really, really cool opportunities doing that work. Um, I just moved to New York about a month and a half ago now uh, to attend business school at NYU Stern. So just starting off my MBA journey and um, yeah, lots of change, lots of really exciting things, but it's it's been good. And I'm excited to chat with you about, about all those things later today. And I'm, I'm so excited for you now that you're at NYU and to talk about that. But I think I want to kind of start closer to the beginning of your career and talk a little bit how you got into that White House internship and kind of started your career in politics. Um, what was that experience like for you and how did that kind of contribute to what you decided to do next? Sure. Well, I, I think that some of the important things that I pull out of the White House internship experience was that first, I didn't think there was any chance of me getting it, but I still applied for it. In fact, the internship coordinator at my school, I went in and met with him and told him what I wanted to apply for and said, oh, and I'm going to apply to the White House. And he truly laughed at me and said, don't do it. Like, that's a bad idea. People don't get that. Like, especially people from our school, there's, there's no Santa Barbara kids at, at the White House. And I just took that experience and walked out the door and said, I'm going to do it. Like, I'm going to apply. And if it doesn't work out, then at least I know I tried. But if it does work out, I think it could be one of the coolest experiences ever. And um, I did apply. It happened to work out um, and truly was the best summer of my life. Really so challenged, so engaged. I got to be with some of the coolest people, friends to this day, my closest friends to this day. Um, I met through that experience. And yeah, I mean, I think there's so much it gave me, but one of the biggest things was that lesson of if you want something and you're excited about something, you just have to try it. Because if you don't put your name in, if you don't throw your resume out there, you you'll never know if you have an opportunity like that or not. And so, um, yeah, it was, it was amazing. And it definitely paved the way for me to come back to DC a couple of years later. Um, because I just, I fell, fell in love with the city and the people. Yeah. And I'm glad you came into DC because that's how we ended up meeting. And yes. I, I feel the same way too. I've heard that people will like self-select or self-deselect where they take themselves out of the running before even trying because they don't believe that they're going to make it, that they're going to be accepted to the internship or the job or the school. So they don't even try when we don't know they actually could have made it and you ended up trying and it, it worked out for you. So how did that contribute to you then working for social justice reform? Was it kind of an easy transition or what really drew you to the, the work that you did there? Yes. Well, I mean, again, I, I totally agree. I think that self-selection is so important um, to, to fight against and to make sure you have people around you who are saying you can do it and, and we believe in you. Um, so my role uh my move into criminal justice reform was actually super twisty and had lots of, you know, lots of, lots of sharp turns, but basically I graduated from Santa Barbara and wanted to work in tech. I moved to San Francisco, worked for Glassdoor for two years, really loved it. And then during that time I was competing for Miss California. So I competed three times the three summers after I'm um, starting like 2017, 2018, 2019, I competed three years in a row and um, really loved being in California, but every year was like, oh, I just want to move to DC. I'm getting closer. Um, I really want to be in DC. And then my second year, 
uh, competing for Miss California in that run of three was um, I was Miss Bay Area. And we were at this pageant. One of the teen contestants was, you know, they were doing their dress rehearsal. And one of the teen contestants' moms came up to me and said, hey, like, I heard the director say you worked in the White House. I do a lot of work with criminal justice reform. We're working on this bill right now, the First Step Act. Uh, I'm the mayor of this city in Northern California. And I just like was captivated by this woman and wanted to get to know her, wanted to be around her, wanted to learn from her because she had overcome so much in her life and done so many amazing things with her, with her life. And so we stayed in touch for the next couple of years. And then when I was Miss Marin County, her daughter won Miss Marin County's Outstanding Teen. And so we got to spend even more time together that whole year. And then when Miss California ended, um, she came up to me right after the pageant ended. We were at our little gala and she said, okay, like, we're moving to DC. Do you want to come with us? Like, come and help me um, uh, set up this brand new criminal justice nonprofit in DC. And so, yeah, I mean, again, being in the right place at the right time does a lot. Um, being vocal about your story. She, she would have never like brought that up to me if she hadn't heard that that was an interest of mine. Um, I stayed really connected with her over those years, um, continuing to reiterate my interest in what she was doing and wanting to, you know, be involved with what she was doing. And then, um, yeah, it, it just was the right place and the right time and the opportunity presented itself, but it was definitely, uh, you know, a, a lot of things, um, a lot of things intersecting at the right time, but, but definitely a really cool experience. And I, I think that really touches on the fact that you can meet somebody anywhere who could be a good connection and a good person to have in your network. And you never know where down the line that connection is going to come into play and how they can yeah. help you and how you can help them. So it's really interesting that you had that connection. And it, was, it wasn't until a few years later that it actually turned into something and it turned into your big move back over to D.C. And I'm, I'm glad that you did it. And I did not mention at the beginning, but Jane was first runner up to Miss California. I think it was 2019. And yep. it was the national sweetheart winner that year. So that's huge and big congrats. I love meeting other uh, pageant women who compete, who uh, do really well in the system. And I think um, we can relate a little bit on that front. So I'm so glad to have you as part of this conversation. It just goes to show that in, even in the pageant world, you can meet a lot of people who are going to help you professionally and that you're going to have as great connections down the line. I definitely have had that experience as well. So that's great. Um, and I want to draw out really quickly. Um, yeah. I don't know how many people watching this are pageant people, but a piece of advice I've gotten a lot was take your pageants off your resume, like just take it off your resume. But I'm going to say one of the reasons I got the White House internship was because my boss was from Ventura County and I had been Miss Ventura County the year before. And she had 8,000 resumes in this system and that caught her eye. And I got my interview through that. Um, my job in tech, that was the other thing that stood out. My boss was like, wait, this is really cool. I just want to talk to her. And it pulled me in. And then at business school, I mean, it's been something that came up in my interviews. Um, it set me apart in a lot of events. They would be like, one of the people in this room is like, uh, was a, like a finalist in a Miss America competition. Like yeah. people think it's cool. So if, if you take nothing else out of this and if you're in pageants, like, please leave it on your resume. Even if it just says Miss America organization involved, because it will, it, it's something that differentiates you. Um, and, and people are interested in it. They're, they're a lot less judgmental than you think. Like they, they, they want to hear about it. So keep it on your resume and yeah. your LinkedIn. Yeah. Over the years, I've gotten the same advice and I've taken it on and off and on and off. And I just haven't been sure what to do, but you do a lot in, in this role with your personal platform, with the work you do in the community, with the skills that you gain in terms of public speaking. It's something to really talk about and people are interested in it. Even if they've, they've never met anyone who does it before, they're curious. So it can be a good icebreaker and conversation. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you mentioned that you are now in business school. You're at NYU Stern. What contributed to that decision? Because it seems like you were going down more of a public sector route before, maybe even politics. What was the reason you decided to even apply to business school? Such a good question. And it was a very long uh, process to discern what kind of schooling to go to. I think graduating from my um, graduating from undergrad, I knew I wanted to go into 
I knew I wanted to go to grad school at some point. I kind of thought I wanted to do law school. And then I worked in the White House and everyone who was a lawyer was like, don't go to law school. And then all my friends went to law school and said, don't go to law school. So that was kind of where I went with law school was I don't really want to be a lawyer. I want the degree and that ability to think critically, but I didn't want to be a lawyer. So that one was crossed off. And then, um, when I was in San Francisco, you didn't really need a secondary degree to just move up, especially in like the tech startup world. Um, but when I got to DC, as I'm sure, you know, it is, it's highly expected, if not, you know, required for many roles to, to go back to school in some capacity. And, um, so one of the other reasons I took the criminal justice job is because I knew that I, I was interested in policy and politics. And this was my chance to dive into something really deeply and figure out if policy and politics was, was what I was interested in. And so I really encourage people, especially early on in your career, if there's something you're interested in, go and do it. Like right now, these 10, 15 years at the beginning of your career are like a testing period for trying new things and putting yourselves in new situations. And so because I got to experience the federal government and then tech And then criminal justice reform, like even coming into business school, I have such a varied background that I can contribute in discussions about all sorts of things because I've had those experiences. And so that was a big part of my experience was, okay, I'm going to go work in policy, see if this leads to something. Maybe this will be my push to law school or my push to get an MPP or my push to get an MPA. And then during COVID, as many people did, you know, you had, you had your little uh, quarter life crisis, um, And uh, I started talking seriously to people in different programs and trying to figure out, I talked to a lot of people who had their MPP and people had their MPA and and their MBAs and pretty much across the field, people told me to get an MBA. They just said it was the most transferable. Um, They said you can use it inside and outside of public service. Um, It's well-respected. And what was really important to me was that there's money in it. So for me, a huge consideration was it's a very expensive degree. Um, every graduate degree is very expensive. And so I wanted to put myself in a situation where there was an opportunity to get scholarship money, um, because I was a bit frightened of taking on the debt that, um, that many of these degrees incur. So it was kind of a mix of all those things, people that I really respected telling me to go to school, go to business school. Um, and yeah, it was definitely the right decision. I think as I made my way down the road and, you know, I know you, you took the GMAT it's, it's, you know, you go one step at a time and you're just yeah. doing the best you can. Um, it, it, every step of the road, I felt really affirmed that it was the right thing to be doing. So, um, that was kind of the journey here. Nice. I know I've had to ask myself those same questions, taking the GMAT, preparing to apply, asking, is this really the right thing to do? Is taking on debt the right decision to make in terms of the payoff? And so I think that's kind of an exercise that everyone needs to take on before making that big decision is, is the economic investment to go to grad school, does it make sense given my what my opportunities are going to be afterwards, right? And the payoff that I might have, and will I actually be able to pay off those loans? Um, so that, that's hard. It's not just an investment in terms of, it's costly to go to school, but you're taking two years off of work as well. So that's another opportunity Mm -hmm. cost that you're incurring, but it sounds like you really thought through that decision and it's, it's paying off now. Like you're already in New York, you're at NYU. What has been, I guess, the most surprising or unexpected part of the experience so far? I know that you just started, but how's it going? Oh my gosh. I I was actually at dinner with a friend last night and she asked the same question and I'm trying to think of the the most unexpected. I think to be honest, it is so much better than I could have imagined. Like really it has been the best decision I have ever made in my career. Like I think I, I rank this up there with the white house, like the white house internship, like set the trajectory of my career. Like knowing I had such a good network, people around me who were really smart and driven and engaged, um, feeling confident that like I could accomplish something and like be in the room with those people. And that's the same thing business school has done. Like really such an amazing class of students, such, such a fun, engaged. It, it's like in the first week of school, we did a group project and I'm used to on group projects, like no one caring, no one doing any work and me having to like drag people kicking and screaming to like get something done. And this was like the first group project I think I'd ever had where everybody like wanted to be there and like wanted to do the thing. And it wasn't me having to like pull people behind me. 
And it was a shock because I was so not used to that. I'm like, I'm usually the one who's like, we have to do this now. Like, let's go. (laughs) And just that, that experience was really good for me because it helped me realize like you're with people who care and business school specifically is just so much about connections and building relationships with people and learning from one another that it's been, um, yeah, better than I could have imagined. Um, I think I expected that stuff. I don't, I think I I don't know what I didn't expect. I mean, it's just been better. Like everything that I was hoping for, it has delivered on and and more, which has been, you know, definitely a gift. Yeah. And from, from others that I've talked to who have, who have done MBAs, they say, just like fully invest yourself while you're there in the community, in the people around you, everybody's self-selected to be there, right? They went through the whole process. It's not like, it's not like a bachelor's degree where it's kind of every not everybody, but a lot of people get bachelor's degrees. Yeah. 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 Everybody decides to go on and get certain graduate degrees. So everybody did really decide to be there, which is, which is amazing. In terms quick plug for NYU really quick. Yeah, I like, I was really hesitant because I was like, <laughs> I get to plug it now. Um, I was really hesitant because I thought that moving to a city where everybody lived here, I wouldn't make any friends. Like I truly thought that everyone was going to have their friends and it was going to be, you know, we just disappeared on the weekends and did our own thing. But like the community here is so strong and there is something to do every minute of every day. People are so friendly, welcoming, inviting. Like I already feel so close to this class. I've met a lot of their New York friends already. Um, And it's also nice to have like New York, other friends that I have in this city that I get to see and, you know, grab dinner with and, and connect with. So that was a, that was a hesitancy I had about moving to a city for, for a business school or for grad school. But um, I can tell you that it was, it's been great. So just wanted to plug that there. No, I'm so glad. I'm and so- New York is like the best city ever also, by the way, <laughs> coming from a DC <laughs> girl, a few weeks. <laughs> die hard DC girl. I freaking love New York. It, it has gotten okay. me. It, it has. All yeah. right. All right. I guess, I guess I'll take your word for it. Um, I'm so glad that you've been enjoying it so far and that it's working out so well. In terms of what's next, I know that you all are probably starting to recruit for your summer internships. Um, and then thinking, you know, what are you going to do career wise after MBA? Cause this is only two years. Have you started thinking about that yet? Yes. Um, yes, we have thought about that. Um, yeah, I, I like what you said about really being invested in that community and in what you have. Mm-hmm. So my primary, my primary recruiting focus is consulting, which I know, you know, well, um, so that's my goal is to move into consulting at least once I graduate. Uh, But down the road, I really want to start my own business. And so I'm taking time here to take a lot of classes on entrepreneurship and strategy. Uh, We have a lot of like entrepreneurship challenges. You can go be on the board of a startup. I've joined the Entrepreneurship and Startup Association. So I think that I'm trying to build out my skill set for the roles I want down the road. Um, But most, you know, urgently, I think I'm, I'm looking at consulting so I can have a bit more experience with leaders at different companies to see what's working, what's not have that insight. Um, I didn't even know consulting was like a career path until I graduated college and like had friends who were doing it. And I was like, why did I miss this? This is, this sounds like such a cool thing to do. So this is, this is kind of my opportunity to like have that chance to go into consulting, um, and I'm really excited to, to do that. And it's been, it's been a crazy recruiting experience already, but it's been really fun and we're all in it together. So we're like, if you're not familiar, we, you do case interviews. So we're all like in case interview workshops together. And it's been really fun getting to do that with my classmates, but that's the plan. We'll see how it shifts and changes. I'm always open, but at the moment, that's the plan. No, I'm excited for you. And I, I am familiar. I have worked in consulting for three years and I, ha- I didn't hear about it until I was in undergrad and saw a lot of my friends in my undergraduate business program recruiting for consulting. And I was like, I don't even fully understand what this is, uh, but jumped on the bandwagon and started recruiting as well. And I've been working in public sector and nonprofit consulting for the past three years and have loved it. So I'm definitely glad that you're you're thinking about this route. It's It's definitely a great way, I think, to learn a lot about different organizations and different leadership styles and different, you know, business problems that you're solving for in a relatively short period of time. So I definitely recommend it for someone trying to go into entrepreneurship later down the road. 
Um, but it is kind of a, a nebulous, like weird career path that yeah. everybody understands or has even heard of. So it's, it's hard to explain sometimes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's cool because I think that if you're stepping into a career where you're working a lot and you're putting in a lot of hours, like it's important to be with people that you like. And that's been really important to me as I talk to people at different firms is, oh, I could totally hang out with this person. I feel like these people, you know, would be people I want to be around. So I, I view it honestly as just an extension of the business school experience where you're continuing to learn like very hands-on. Um, so yes, I'm excited and it's a bit of a stressful recruiting process, but I'm just trying to take it a day at a time and um, trust it's going to work out, but it's been fun so far. Yeah. And I want to, I want to circle back on the pageant aspect. I know that we touched on it a little bit, but I want to know how have the skills and the experiences that you picked up during all your years competing contributed to what you're doing now? Do you see those coming into play in, you know, your schoolwork and what you're pursuing? How has that helped you as a professional? Really good question. Uh, Countless ways, truly countless ways. I already talked a little bit about how I think it's gotten me in the door in places that it could have been harder for me to get in the door. Uh, I think that, um, you know, when you do a pageant and you put yourself out there and everybody knows you're competing and you make it really public and then it like doesn't work out, it can be kind of like a bummer. Um, but I think it's important. I always say that if you're not failing and if you're not failing publicly, then you're probably like not living a life of courage or the life of courage that I think we're called to live. So I think getting used to failing pretty publicly um, has been really good for me because I will, you know, speak up in these classes of 60 kids, 60 students, and I'll be wrong. But I think I have a, a confidence of like, oh, I can say something because I failed before and it didn't kill me. And I've been embarrassed before and it didn't kill me. And I think when you, when you're able to work through those experiences, like in pageants, you get that, you get that all the time. Like you're constantly on stage, you're constantly having to fail and move forward. And I think that, you know, I have friends who did pageants and it didn't work out in the way that they had dreamed, you know, like one person becomes Miss America every year. One person is Miss USA. Like I even have friends who've won those titles and like, it doesn't, it doesn't last forever. Like it, it it's not going to fulfill you forever, but even friends who have, who, who haven't won those titles, um, they just kind of want to forget about the pageant thing and let it go and be like, oh yeah, that was a silly thing I did, like whatever. But like, I think we also really owe it to ourselves to understand like what pageants have done for us and the ways in which pageants have pushed us so far out of our comfort zones and into situations and places that maybe we never would have have been or things we would have done, um, otherwise. So yeah, I think that be proud of that experience, keep it on your resume. Um, and, uh, and yeah, recognize, I think being grateful, especially once you age out, like I aged out and I think having them time to be like, I am so grateful for what this has done for me and the ways in which it will continue to serve me. And it has like, it just, it absolutely has. So, um, I know it's hard in the moment, but in the long run, you'll see like how much it's done for you. Uh, and it's good to be grateful for that. Yeah. I, I feel like I've heard similarly and felt the same, like there's no stronger test of your character and, and what's really going to push you to grow is coming so close, but, but losing, you know, we don't like to say that you lost, but not getting the actual title. That is a huge test of your character, even more so probably than winning. And so mm-hmm. how you react to that and how you take that experience and move on with it, incorporate that in the rest of your life is really telling about how, you know, how you're going to grow from this experience and how you're going to just respond to similar situations as a person. Like you're going to fail, you're going to fail publicly. And it's how we react to those situations that really matters. So um, thank you so much, Jane. I want to close off with one more question. And that is, do you have any advice for other young women who want to pursue politics or uh, MBA career in consulting, any general final advice that you would give, not just pageant girls, but any, any young woman? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Oh, I feel like I give this advice a lot, but I think it's because it's worked for me and, um, and been really helpful when I've been trying to make decisions about kind of next steps to take in my life or my career. And it's just to be curious like be really curious because 
you'll see people around you doing things and you'll be like, oh, maybe I should do that. Like this person's going to this company or getting this promotion or whatever. And it gets so tricky when we sit there and compare ourselves and get competitive with the people around us because you're ultimately them pursuing the things that they want and not what you want. And so get really curious. Like I wouldn't have done pageants if I hadn't have um, been curious about it. Like rationally, it made no sense. I had no reason to be doing them. Um, I wouldn't have applied to the white house if I had been rational, like, um, business school too. Like the process of this is just, is just wild. Um, but I think that when you're curious about the things that are kind of like pulling at your heart, you will have the coolest life and the greatest adventures. And like, I look back on the last, I guess I did my first pageant when I was 17. So I'm 26. I look back on the last nine years of my life and inside and outside of pageants, um, I can tell you that like, like the coolest experiences I've had were because I was curious. So stay curious and like spend some time with yourself, just trying to figure out what it is that you are interested in because it's different for all of us and it will take you on a great adventure, which is what, you know, life should be. Thanks, Jane. I think that's perfect advice. Stay curious. Well, I want to close out by asking how can people keep up with you? Do you have social media, LinkedIn? How can they keep up with what you're up to? Sure. Yes, I do have social media. I'm on Instagram at Jane E. Kennedy. Um, but I do a lot of work. I actually have a ministry called the Sunday Monday, which is, um, designed to help women bring their faith from Sunday into their work week on Monday. And I spend most of my time over there. So you can find the Sunday Monday also on Instagram at the Sunday Monday underscore. And we have a podcast, um, and lots of great women who are, you know, like Hannah doing amazing things in the world of work. Um, and it's just a great community. So you can come hang out with us there. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jane. This has been really fun. Thank you for being the first guest. And for I'm so excited to see where this goes. It's going to be awesome. (laughs) Um, That's it for this episode. But thanks, y'all. And tune in next time. Bye.